Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, today's first story comes from Carthroway9, who says, I, 23 female, won a free car. My boyfriend, 25 male, and his family seem to think I'll give it to him for free. So, I-23 female won a brand new compact car in a raffle I entered a few weeks ago at a trade show I was at for work, which is awesome, but I already have an older car that I really like, and I just finished paying it off so I can finally pay the cheaper liability only insurance. My car still has a lot of life on it, it only has about 100k miles, and if I were to choose a brand new car, it would not be the one that I had won. I did some research and after taxes and shipping, I can make about 14 to 15k from selling the car. That money would be an incredible start after graduating college. It would more than triple my savings. My boyfriend, 25 male of a little over a year, has been without a car for a few months. He's been struggling a bit financially, so he hasn't got a new one yet. But he can walk to the grocery store, gets a ride to work, and I drive anywhere else. It worked out fine and I really don't mind. He helps out with gas and driving. For background, he lives with friends. I live with my dad for free, so I'm able to save up money. I definitely see a future with him, but we aren't at the point where we've talked about moving in together yet, but we are very serious. I went to a gathering at his parents' house last night. His whole family has been wonderful and welcoming to me, and everyone congratulated me on winning the car. But everyone, including my boyfriend, seemed to think the logical and obvious step was to either give it to my boyfriend or give him my car and keep the new one. I don't plan to do either of these things. It would be different if we were married or living together and our money was mixed together, but it is not. We aren't at that point in the relationship yet. I don't want to give him what would essentially be $15,000 in cash. It doesn't make any sense. If I'd won the money instead, there wouldn't be any talk of just giving it all to him. That car and the resulting money should be mine. It's not my responsibility to provide him with a free car, whether it be my $5,000 car that I really like or this brand new one. For the dinner at his family's house, I just stayed quiet because I was so shocked at their assumption and didn't want to rip it away from him in front of his entire extended family. How do I break this to him and his family that this car and the money from it is not in any way his. Now, there were some people talking about the taxes on that kind of win, which I don't know about. I don't know about US taxes and all that sort of stuff. But whenever we cover stories like this, I'm always just sort of like shocked by the absolute entitlement of this. For someone that you've only been with for a little over a year, to suddenly turn around and expect because you won this car and you've already got one that you're just going to gift it to them. And for the family to be, you know, thinking this way as well. And it would also make me worry that they was discussing this in the background. You know, I might be jumping to conclusions there, but they were discussing your win and what you're going to do with it without you even being there in the first place. But absolutely, just tell them, no, <laughs> you're not giving $15,000 to someone to someone just like that. But Falkson says, and say this, hey, so I didn't want to make a scene with your family, but just to be clear here, my plan with the car that I won is to sell it for cash and use that to get a good start on life. I'm not sure what anyone got the impression that I'd just be handing over the equivalent of $15,000 in cash, but that's not something that's going to be happening. I wanted to make sure that we're on the same page about that. Clarkson then goes on to say, hopefully he'll accept that gracefully. It won't be a big deal and you'll move forward together normally. If he does kick up a fuss about you giving him a car, you're going to have to make a decision about whether that kind of entitlement is something that you want to be in a relationship with. You are right that if you were married or even have lived together for several years with joint finances, the situation might have been different. But the two of you don't even live together yet. I'm expecting a multi-thousand dollar gift as his by right of dating you is a bit much. Just stand your ground. If he says something like he'll make payments to you for the car, then advise him that you'll be willing to sell the new car to him for the full value if he will take out a loan so that he's making payments to the bank rather than you. You don't want to be in the position of having to collect money from him either, in or outside of a relationship. Don't sell him your old car as you don't want to keep the new car and it'd be just a way of getting less cash to keep something that you don't care for. 
Winston says, I'm shocked at their entitlement also. It could be that they were just exuberant and got carried away. I think my advice will be to proceed as if they were joking. Now I have to really decide what to do with the car. I can't afford to keep it and pay the taxes and insurance on it. I think I'll sell it for $15,000, pay off my current car, figure out how much I will have to go to the IRS and put the rest in savings. Maximum Farting says, <laughs> that's a good name, your boyfriend hasn't asked, so carry on like you intended. Put the car up for sale. If he asks, say you're not giving him the car and that you're weirded out, that he seriously thought you just hand over an asset worth thousands of dollars to him after only dating him a year. Either he understands and it's not a big deal, or he reveals a surprisingly ugly side of himself, and this will be a thorny issue in your relationship. And one more comment from Heroic Wannabe who says your boyfriend's entitlement is definitely misplaced. But as far as his family goes, is it possible that he had naively told them all that you planned to give it to him and they were acting under the assumption that he was telling the truth? That seems a little easier to swallow than all of them making the same assumption about you. So OP does come in to update the post and says, so the day after the family gathering where everyone assumed I just let my boyfriend use the car for free, I had to drive into the city where I won the car to sign a bunch of paperwork and pay some fees. We both had the day off, so I text my boyfriend and asked if he'd like to come along so we could walk around the city and go out to eat afterwards. He agreed and I picked him up. We hadn't talked about the night before at all. He asked general questions about what it was I had to do today. I explained that and then I explained how the taxes on the car were going to be several thousand dollars but luckily I could cover them with my savings until I got the money for selling the car. And hopefully it would come out to around 14 to 15 K based on my brother's calculations. He was quiet for a minute and asked, you don't want to keep it? And I said, no, but I was happy with the older, bigger car I currently have. It better suits our needs and I can pay cheaper insurance on it because it's paid off. He said that he didn't realize that the taxes would be so much. It was awkward in the car for a moment and I finally just asked, did your family think I'd give you the car to use? He said his mum told everyone right before I got there that we, meaning boyfriend and I, won the car and that I'd finally have something to drive. He said that he didn't think I'd do that but he assumed I'd want to keep the new car simply because it was new and that maybe I'd let him use my old car if he took over the insurance payments. But then he very quickly said that he did not realise the taxes would be more than a few hundred dollars. I guess his train of thought makes sense given what he assumed about the cost. He agreed that it made the most sense to sell the new car. I asked if he was going to explain that to his mother and he said that he would and that she views the two of us like a married couple already. But she wants that so badly for him and has been heavily pressuring him to propose to me. That I did not know. Neither of us are at the point where we're even remotely ready for that. We're happy with where we are right now. He promised he'd talk to his mom and explain everything to his family and that he wouldn't let any of them think less of me. I was worried about that. So he waited patiently while I dealt with the company running the raffle. It ended up taking over three hours. And then we had a nice time strolling around the city and I treated us to a very nice dinner. Now, I was felt two sides after this update. You know, I sort of felt like, you know, two young people discussing things, working things out. It seemed like a positive to me, but there was a little side of me, you know, about the initial dinner and stuff. And they kind of just allowed the conversation to continue and make the situation uncomfortable for OP. And, it, and that just sort of rubbed me the wrong way, if you like. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. Now, our next story is from Anonymous with a string of numbers from the Am I the Arsehole subreddit which was titled, Am I the Arsehole for Refusing to Eat One Friend's Meat <laughs> But Not Another's? Oh, why am I such a child? My husband, 35 male, Jake, and I, 30 female, have a group of friends from his college. Beth, 35 female, George, 35 male, and Lou, 35 female. Beth is jealous of Lou because Lou dated someone who rejected her. Lou, Jake, and I live far from Beth and George two hours from a tourist city in what we call our homestead. We have a garden, chickens, a dairy cow, and we don't eat store-bought processed foods, except on special occasions. My family never eats meat or dairy unless we know where it came from. Since I am a stay-at-home mum, 
I make things from scratch, including butter, buttermilk, farmer's cheese, cream cheese, etc. Lou lives a similar lifestyle. He will trade eggs or canned goods from our garden for goat cheese or things she grows. A neighbor raises beef cattle, so we have met the cows before. We split a cow with Lou's family this past year. Beth and George were visiting the city not too far, so decided to have dinner at my house. I made pasta with garlic bread, butter, chicken parmigiana. Our eating morals aren't something I talk about, so Beth and George weren't aware. Lou hadn't been by in a while, so when she got to our house, she brought a bag of her frozen meatballs that we had traded for. My kids were all raving about them as they really are so good, and Beth gets a look, asking what is so special about them. I told her Lou must have some secret sauce because I can never compete with them. Dinner goes well outside of that. Beth and George planned to stop for dinner on their way home. Lou and I were making dinner when they arrived. Beth was holding a tray of meatballs that looked to be homemade. She was smiling and walked in, asking everyone to try them. I don't force my kids to follow the know your cow thing, but my daughter asked her what cow the meatballs were from. Beth laughed and said it was just grocery store meat and to try it. She would like it. My daughter said no thanks. Beth went around trying to get people to eat them, but my family and Lou's family all said no thank you. George was eating them trying to save the situation, but she came into the kitchen looking like she was going to cry and started yelling at Lou and I, saying how we really turned our families against her and are refusing to try her food out of spite. I explained we don't eat meat or dairy unless we know the animal. She laughed and told me to stop lying. She brought up the meal at my house had cheese, butter, chicken, and milk, and there's no way I knew the cow that Lou's meatballs had came from. I explained that we did know that cow, our dairy cow, and chicken. I said we call ourselves vegan when we're out. She just said, right, how convenient that when it's Lou's, it's fine, but not me. She grabbed George and they left. They hadn't said anything to us besides one Facebook post Beth made about fake vegans who are only vegan when it suits them for attention. Which makes me think we should have just tried our meatballs. Edit. We use Know Your Cow with our children, but we mean vet your sauce slash rancher. This has confused a lot of people. We aren't hanging around with cows and using their full names. Edit 2. We are having prime rib and twice baked potatoes for dinner with a smoked salmon dip as an appetizer. Eating meatballs right before prime rib is a bit weird in my opinion. Beth copies things Lou does literally every time we are all together. She didn't bring meatballs because she thought they'd go well with our prime rib. It was because of her internal competition with Lou. Opie comes in, answers some questions from the comments. Someone did say, did you ask them to bring anything? Opie says, we did have a full dinner planned and appetizers and did not ask them to bring anything since they were traveling. They also did not go with the meal we had planned at all, which we had told Beth what we were making in advance. So everyone could see straight through a competition. More on their meat eating philosophy. Opie says, so that we aren't supporting people who mistreat their animals. A lot of grocery store meat comes from cows who are abused and not fed right. If we know the cow, we know how they live and that they are treated well. Small ranchers actually love their cows and treat them with respect and that's the difference. We don't compromise on our know your cow. The processed foods we occasionally do not include meat and dairy. We are flexible on processed foods, not on animal products. We'll eat a bag of potato chips occasionally, but we never eat animal products from places we don't know. Would it not have been super pretentious to just mention how we eat when no one asked? And it wasn't relevant since everything we were eating was good for us until she brought something we didn't ask for. Someone says, do you force your kids to eat like this? Opie says, my kids aren't forced to eat the same way we eat. When they are at friends' parties or at a restaurant, etc., they eat what they want. We're definitely going to teach them more as they are older, but they are only five, four, and two, so we aren't going into depths of farmed meat, animal abuse, and climate change yet. Someone says, so somehow you've never told Beth this. Opie says, we see Beth maybe every two or three years. We haven't eaten out with her. We have three kids. I feel a bit pretentious to just start telling her. Oh, this is made from grass-fed cows from around the corner and are the only meatballs we'll eat since it's made with our free-range eggs. I didn't see why it was relevant since we didn't expect to have her bring food and we weren't eating meatballs that day. Someone says maybe she was just trying to be nice. Obi says she was not trying to be nice. 
She was trying to compete with Lou 100%. She paraded the platter of meatballs around my house, begging everyone to eat one after we told her not to bring anything. She brought meatballs because she was jealous of Lou's meatballs got praises from my kids. She is a very jealous person and has done things like this in the past. Lou gets a new haircut. Oh wow, Beth just goes and gets the exact same haircut. If I had known she was bringing something, I would have explained our diet. But people get so pressed at it. I'm not going to divulge if it isn't relevant. Someone asks OP, they said, so why do you invite her to things then? OP says they live a few states away. They weren't coming to see us, but to a vacation in the city a couple of hours away. They stopped on the way there and back. George is Beth's husband and was super close friends with Jake, which is why they all still get together. There was a lot I couldn't fit into the post because of character limits, but Beth's jealousy of Lou started when Beth asked out a guy and he rejected her. Then Lou dated that guy for a few years. After she was always copying Lou, her hair, her clothes, her demeanor, etc. It toned down when she got with George, but apparently there are still remnants of jealousy. She's jealous of Lou's relationship with my kids as Lou is their godmother. George is one of Jake's closest friends though. And I'd never ask him to cut them off due to this. I don't hate Beth. I just think it's ridiculous to be so insecure towards Lou over something that happened 15 years ago. I've angered the anti-vegans as well as the vegans it seems. We aren't trying to fit in with anyone else's ideology or their perfect way of life. We're just doing what works for us and makes us happy. I don't hate Beth at all. I don't understand her jealousy for Lou, but we do try and enjoy our time together usually. Then there was a little exchange between a commenter and OP. The commenter says, I've been a vegetarian for 20 years. I tell as little people as possible because the second they find out, they accuse you of shoving your lifestyle down their throat. OP says this, People are messaging me so mad at the way we eat when it literally doesn't affect them. I only mention it because it's obviously relevant to the post. Me eating this way doesn't mean the way other people eat is wrong or worse. We're all just doing what works for us with the resources we have. And then there's an edit which says, People were curious about the salmon. It was wild salmon for Alaska that my husband caught, as I have mentioned in other comments. And I think after that post, it's fair to say that overall, the general consensus was that it was a not the arsehole, but there's a few different opinions on the matter down in the comments as well. Some people getting pretty heated about it. But four days later, OP comes in with an update and says, so my post got a lot more attention than I thought it would, but I wasn't allowed to update post. I was deemed not the arsehole, but many people told me I was an arsehole just for eating the way we eat. It's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation in my mind. A bunch of people called me pretentious for eating this way, and a bunch of people told me I should tell everyone in our lives how we eat to avoid this happening again. But also berated me and called me idiots for eating this way. We don't tell people because it doesn't affect them. We aren't doing this for clout like we've been accused of. People accusing us of treating it as some big secret. Reddit literally prove people riot and treat you worse because of your diet. Be it vegan, vegetarian, whatever. We aren't going to tell people unless we have to still. People also said we sound like rich elitist white people living in mansions. We are not rich. Our area is called trashy. We are not white. Our house is literally less than 1500 square feet. And there is five of us, but okay. We vax our kids and pasteurize our milk, but everything is the stereotype you think it is. On to the actual update. I did not apologize to Beth, mostly because we found out she was screwing Lou's husband for years. Lou and her husband, Phil, 39 male, lived near Beth and George until about four years ago when they moved by us. Apparently when Beth was in town, she made some vague comments and threats to Phil about exposing that they were having an affair for around four years. That ended when he moved. Phil told Lou proactively in an attempt to save their marriage. Lou is currently staying with us while she decides how to move forward. She is most likely going to file for divorce. George has also reached out to Jake talking about the whole affair. He knew Beth struggled with jealousy over Lou, but didn't know how extreme it was until after the meatball incident. And their drive home, where she continuously ranted about how much better she was than Lou in every aspect, and how no one could see it. Beth did not come clean to him about the affair. Lou told him, I haven't heard anything about what Beth and George are doing. I showed Lou this post and she laughed a bit at some of the responses to people getting so upset about what we eat. So yeah, many people said Beth probably had good intentions with the meatballs, but I guess I just didn't describe the level of jealousy well. 
although we weren't expecting she'd take it so far. Not that she's solely to blame. Phil is equally at fault. Phil did say that she was flirting with him and coming on to him for months before he caved. Not that it matters. And we see a lot of posts regarding infidelity, but I gotta be honest, this one, I didn't expect it to go down that route in the end there. Holy moly. But now I'm gonna turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you once again. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.